we'll have Alex Fragostis uh, from League tell us about uh, ingesting uh, healthcare data into Beam uh, with Fire. Um, so yeah, give it up for Alex. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Alex Fragotsis. I am um, I am from Greece, and basically this is my very very first presentation in English. So maybe not a very good idea to put me in the main room. Um, so in the last in the last four and a half years, I live in Toronto and I work as a data engineer at League, um, a company where we build. Uh, a digital health uh, platform for where payers, providers, and pharmacies can create uh, digital experience, experiences for their clients. Um, and today I'm going to talk to you about mapping data into Fire, or basically how I tricked my coworkers to use Dataflow uh, without even knowing it. Uh, so before we go to that, let's talk about what is Fire for those who are not familiar. Fire is um, uh, stands for Fast Health Healthcare Interoperability Resources, uh, and it's a standard that aims to standardize the way we use and exchange healthcare information. Uh, it consists of an HTTP RESTful API. It uses JSON or XML, uh, and basically all of their uh, resources and their, in their interactions between them are uh, modeled and documented. Um, here is an example of the patient record, which is equivalent to the user's table. As we can see on the left side are all the fields that we can use, their types and some descriptions. So again, when we share or use the data, we know exactly uh, what we're using. So now that we kind of know what is Fire, uh, let's talk about how we use Fire at League and the issues that we faced. Um, we started using Dataflow about two, and a half, two years ago, and one of the main, um, the main reasons was that we have, uh, we have data and we want to map them into Fire in real time. And the real time uh, aspect is because we have some systems down the line that they need to react to that data and update the app uh, in real time. Uh, our, uh, our, the data that we, that we receive come from different systems, both internal and external, that don't use Fire. And we needed a tool uh, to do this transformation. So for that, we use uh, Dataflow. And the way we did this in the beginning, it was us, the data engineering team, had to sit down uh, with the team that were going to send us the data. Uh, so first we could understand, then write a mapper uh, data flow job. And for that, we used Python because most of us are familiar with Python. And then at the end, we needed to test and deploy this data flow job. And as you can see, this puts the data engineering team into the middle, and it creates a bottleneck for the whole, for the whole company. Uh, so we decided that we needed to do something better. Um, and yeah, the solution that we came up with is basically uh, inspired by Google's own templates. We build our own Flex template that at its core uh, reads from PubSub, has a transformation step, and then we write to Healthcare API, which is Google's uh, implementation of uh, Fire. Uh, and the way we do this is that we load a Python file from GCS into our Dataflow job. We send all the, all the messages that we read from PubSub, we, we send them, we, we call the function using this, uh, uh, these messages. The, the, the Python function will transform the messages to whatever they want, and then at the end, we will write it to Healthcare API. Um, we actually have... Uh, uh, we have decoupled, basically, w w with what we did, we decoupled the data flow, the template, from the mapping process. And we have actually physically also uh, separated those two. So we have one repo with the data flow template that uh, only the data engineering team uh, works and deploys there. And then we have another, we call it mapper repo, where everyone from any other team can go there and write their own mapper. And then we will uh, go and deploy it. Uh, so let's see now how the, this template works. Uh, we wrote our own Dufan to um, load the, the Python script from GCS, and this is how we do it. It's very simple, like we download it as a string. We do some simple checking. Uh, we have like a, a small uh, imports allow list, mostly for security reasons. And the only requirement that we have from this uh, function is that they need to have like a UDF underscore main method that is going to be used as an entry point uh, to this function. And here we see in the process how we pass the messages from PubSub to the, uh, to the function. We also pass some environment variables on the settings variable. Uh, and the good thing is that these functions can return either one or multiple uh, file messages. So we handle that case as well. And also we wrap the whole thing in a try-cut um, 
method. So if something goes wrong, if there's an exception, we will catch it and store it to GCS or BigQuery and we get alerts. Uh, we will get alerts after that. Now the next step, uh, how we write to healthcare API. We use uh, group messages by sharded key and this works very well in our case because uh, Fire APIs uh, support single resource or bundle resource writing. Uh, so yeah, we, we group the message there and if on the next step we receive one message, we're going to make a single call. If we receive more messages, we're going to put everything into a bundle and we're going to make a one bundle call to, to Fire API. Um, and with, with, that, with that thing, we, we achieve like multiple levels of parallelization. Here you can see uh, a, a, a simple a sample uh, fire bundle. We can see like up and uh, in the big squares we have two fire resources. In this case, both of them are patient, uh, but they can be whatever we want. We can have like patient observations, anything in the same bundle. And also the request method could be different. One of them could be post, put, delete, everything in the same uh, in the same bundle. Uh, so if there is a small sp spike in the messages that we receive. Uh, data flow, uh, sorry, bundles can handle that without data flow need to auto scale. Uh, but if you have like a constant increase in the messages we receive, then um, yeah, data flow will auto scale and then we will, ha we will uh, achieve higher throughput. Again, all these things that I show you here are invisible to the people who write the mappers. The only thing that they need to do is just write a Python mapping function and everything else is taken care of. One thing that we noticed uh, after we uh, deployed a few of these jobs is that we needed to backfill some data. Um, we needed, yeah, we needed to backfill some data, or in some cases we need to uh, run these uh, these data flow jobs in batch. Uh, so uh, actually, we we found a solution for that, and the solution again is inspired by last year's presentation: uh, unified streaming and batch pipelines at LinkedIn using Beam and um, the code is fairly simple. Uh, we support a few different arguments. If the argument is, let's say, input query or uh, GCS file path, we will, de we will deploy the job uh, as bat. Otherwise, we will deploy the real-time uh, reading from PubSub. And as you can see uh, here, we transform every message into uh, a PubSub message. So whether we want to run it in bats or in real time, uh, it doesn't. We don't have to change anything. The the mapper functions would still work. The templates will still work. We don't need to make any absolutely any change. Uh, so and I don't want to go into more, more many details about that. But this is how uh, a Python mapping function looks like, and this is pretty interesting because for a single input. It, can cre it will create one patient record and up to eight observation records. And basically, this is the only thing that someone who writes a, uh, a mapper needs to write, just a simple Python file. And if they want to add like a unit test before sending it to us, uh, that also works. Uh, so as we deployed more and more of these data flow jobs, we saw that more people outside of the data team wanted to deploy that kind of uh, mapping functions. And because not everyone knows Python or wants to learn Python, um, we decided to add another language in our supported languages. So for that reason, we added FirePath, uh, which is um, a subset of JSONPath, uh, and basically someone can write something like this and in, in a similar way we will uh, import it from GCS, add it to our data flow job and then uh, we will use that to transform the messages into fire. And basically anything that we can do with Python uh, we should be able to do with FirePath as well. So for example checking if a field exists before doing a mapping, uh, doing, uh, before doing a mapping we can still do that with using the optional mapping query here. Uh, we support multiple mapping, so for a single input, generate many fire resources by putting all the mappers into a list. And we also support inheritance. So let's say we have one mapping, one mapper uh, function that transforms for a single input that transforms and, and creates the fire objects uh, at the end. Uh, if, let's say, now we get a new input with a slightly different uh, message, we only need to write the mapping for the, the, the fields that have changed. And then by using the parent field, uh, it will um, it will still work. Uh, so this was the template that we created, and I have ad I added a, a section here about the architecture, but basically how we deploy these data flow jobs. Because when we were looking um, about like setting up some CI CD for uh, for our jobs, I couldn't find anything online, so I just added it here to show you how we ended up doing it at League. 
so the requirements that we have is that we wanted to set up CI CD fast for new data flow jobs. We wanted to be able to deploy different versions of these data flow jobs into different environments. And we also wanted to be able to deploy uh, in these jobs into different projects easily. And as I said, we have two repos. Uh, so so for both of them, we have set up GitHub Actions that what they do is like first they send the code to a main project that we call Artifacts. And from there, we deploy to every other project we want to deploy. So first, on the template, on the Dataflow templates repo, uh, on every PR, for example, we will create a Docker image for the staging and test environments. And whenever we merge to prod, we will create an image for the prod environments. So far, we have just uh, created the templates. We haven't deployed anything yet. Now, going to the UDFs repo, uh, this is a little bit different. So every subfolder here represents a new mapping function. Uh, and what, what, what GitHub Actions does here is basically just copies the main.py file into the central project that I showed you before. And this is where the magic happens. So the moment the file lands to uh, the cloud storage, it will trigger a PubSub notification, which will go to every project that we want to deploy this job. Then this notification will uh, trigger cloud build, which first copies this UDF locally, and then uses the Dataflow image from the central project to deploy uh, the Dataflow job to the project that it runs. Uh, we use different tags to uh, separate like staging from uh, prod deployments. And then we orchestrate everything uh, using Terraform. So this is the module that we have created. And uh, basically, this is, uh, this, is everything, this is all we need. If we want to deploy a new data flow job, we just copy that template to the new project location. And we basically, maybe just change the name, and this is it. Uh, as we can see here, for example, we have the pub sub topic that we need to write. Uh, inside the module, we will create a subscription. We can add the, the filter, uh, grant permissions to the service account, and pass the topic URL to the Dataflow job so we can read from that. Uh, if there is an error back at URL, we will grant permissions uh, to, uh, f to, to write to this uh, bucket. We will pass and, and we will pass uh, the URL of the bucket to the Dataflow job so it can add this step that um, keeps uh, all the failed messages to, that stores all the uh, uh, failed messages to the bucket. Uh, if there is an, the enable write row to GCS um, flag at the end, uh, this is for uh, storing all the raw messages before uh, doing any transformation, mostly for backup reasons. So if, if this is set to true, we will create a new bucket, grant permissions, pass again the URL to the Dataflow job. So Dataflow will add that step that writes um, all the raw messages to GCS. And of course, we have some flags for like enabling streaming, streaming engine, Dataflow Prime, workers, etc. Finally, on the same Terraform module, we have set up uh, alerting. And for that, we use uh, cloud monitoring uh, with some sp uh, predefined thresholds. So yeah, if something uh, goes up the threshold, we will get alerts. This is set up with, uh, this is connected to PagerDuty. So again, in the same repo, out of the box inside the, inside the module that we have, the moment we deploy a new Dataflow job, everything comes uh, right there. Uh, and basically, this is, this is what we have built. We built a, a new template. Uh, we set up this weird architecture that I showed you. Uh, and what, what did we gain from that? It was uh, basically like a, a big investment, and it already pays off. As I told you in the beginning, we had to set up with every team in order to first understand and, and map uh, the data and then deploy it. And that, in the beginning, it took us almost two weeks, like 14 days, <coughs> 14 days to deploy a new job. Now the data engineering's job is maybe a day. We just need to copy this Terraform module to wherever we want to deploy, and that's it. We unblock all the other teams to start testing and deploy, and deploying their jobs, uh, and our job is done. Uh, our job is done. Our job is done fast. We are always there to support, uh, but basically everything is much faster now. Thank you.